All right, Sagres Mini, it is. It's a hot one tonight. I decided to shoot with the Panasonic GH5 Voigtlander 17.5, 0.95 lens, just in case you're interested. Lie, lie. There's another source there, there's a ticking clock. <clears throat> I was writing my book yesterday. I'm writing a book, but I, I was. It's from as early as I can remember to. till I left Ireland to come to Portugal. And then the second book's going to be from Portugal to, to now. Because there's, there's a book in Portugal. But the first one was kind of like about the kind of lessons I'd learned. But it's only after you write the the book or the episode or the chapter or the story that you realise there's another lesson in it. And the one I was writing about yesterday was when I was a bike rider, I raced bicycles when I was a kid from like 15 to... 23 24 something like this and all i wanted to do was ride a bike all i wanted to do was get in the tour de france all i wanted to do was be great and uh i just wasn't <laughs> but i had i had my moments i had my moments but i just didn't make it to where i wanted to make it but there was this race called the ross talton or the milk race or the milk ross and it was a nine day stage race around ireland and as I was a kid, when I was growing up, all I heard about was the men of the Ross, the men of the Ross. And I used to ride for the Irish Road Club. And we'd go to a meeting every month. And Sam Darcy would bring up about the men of the Ross and who was on the Ross team and an A team and a B team and everyone should compete. And it was it was that kind of like, um, I was up on a shelf, I was up on a pedestal, I was up on, you know, when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, dreaming about being in the Ross. And then one day I was in it. <laughs> Um, we are in O'Connell Street, the start was in O'Connell Street at the GPO and I remember looking across the Paul O'Keefe and there's 200 lads lined up for this kind of like ceremony to start through the city centre before we, we got going and I said we're actually doing it, we're actually riding the Ross and it was, um, it was a big moment for me because there I was with all these guys that looked like gods and it was just me and it, it didn't feel quite like I should have been there so day one starts I think it was like every day it's nine days so it's like 160k every day so about 100 miles every day and it's amateur racing so amateur racing goes from the gun it's not like the pros they ride the last 30 miles so anyway race starts I think I finished the Mullingar at long and um we're racing, racing, racing. And then all of a sudden, there was a tax going off the front. And I found myself in this big group of like 25, 23 guys. And all the heads were in the group. And I was in the group. And the whole French team were there. Like these four French dudes. All immaculate, immaculate bikes. You know, they had like a road map of veins on their calves. You knew they were good. And just classy looking bike riders, the way they just when you get to a certain level of any sport you can see the classiness in the fine detail whereas at the start you just can't recognize it, it all looks the same you know whereas the way they handle the voice the way they sat on the voice the way they pedal they just they just oozed of class and i was flying everything was easy every pedal stroke was easy and i remember we got the first time check it was like two and a half minutes ahead and then it was three minutes, then it was four minutes, it was four and a half minutes, and John Sheen was there. And John says to me, this is the move. And that just means this is the move that stays away. In cycling, you've got like all these moves that keep going, and people try and get away from the bunch and try and win. Because it's easier to win in a small group than it is in 200, you know? Unless you're a fast finisher, which I was never. Um, and the thing about a breakaway is, a break is either works or it doesn't work either 
people look around, see who's in the group, and they think, okay, there's some good guys here. We can all work together, which means you do a turn on the front and you, you ride through, and then the next guy comes through and the next guy comes through. So you're all taking a turn, a turn at the front to break the wind because it's like 30 to 40, 30, 35, 40% easier when you're sitting in behind somebody or sitting in behind two or three people. It gets easier. So everyone does a bit at the front and everyone has this kind of like um, alliance that goes on, even though you're not on the same team. And then at some stage, the alliance goes out the window and, and it's um, every man for himself. So everyone starts attacking. So there was no sign of us being caught. And a group of 25 is just too many to get to the finish because people want to split the group by attacking the group. So at about 15 kilometers to go, first French guy attacks, boom, off he goes, sprints off the front, everyone chases. And because there's four of them, the next French guy goes, the next French guy goes, and they just keep attacking after attacking after attacking after attacking. And it was about 5k to go. And then this guy, one of the French guys, puts in this huge, big effort and attacks. And for some reason, I was on his wheel when he attacked and I went with him and I just did everything just to hang on to his wheel he was motoring and I was just like swinging just all I was looking at was keeping that gap as close as it could between my front tour and his back tour and we rode we rode we rode we rode for about 30 seconds a minute and then I looked under my arm and there's a fucking huge gap the guys have set up, set up behind because they're all looking for somebody else to chase and no one wants to chase and all of a sudden the gap opens because we're going 15 kilometers an hour quicker than they are. And I think I'm fucking hell, it's like two kilometers to go. And I'm in, I'm with the guy that's going to win the stage. One of us is going to win the stage. And I was just, I was like, fucking hell, man, I, I'm going to get at least second, at least second. You know, he's shouting at me to come through. So I'll go through. He comes through again. I'm going to be, because on the first day, you know, the, whoever wins gets the yellow jersey. Whoever gets second gets the green jersey. And for me, just, just being in the race was just overwhelming. And all of a sudden, with a kilometre to go, I'm in a chance of winning the fucking stage, being in the yellow jersey. And I just had this, like, overwhelming, um, I don't know what the fuck it was. But when I was writing it, I kind of realised what it was. Coming into the finish, we went on, in through this tunnel. There was a left-hand turn under a railway bridge, and I was wearing real, I was wearing dark sunglasses. And as we went down, I couldn't see it. And as I looked up, he he went left, and I missed the left, and I hit the footpath and hit the wall, and um, crashed. <laughs> and by the time I got back up on the bike, the the rest of the remnants of the break had already caught me and I kind of limped into the finish. And I remember just like crying. Uh, I think it's the first and only time I, I physically shed tears in a bike race because I just thought I'd fucking blow, like at least second, at least second. All I had to do was just fucking hang on to his wheel. I couldn't even fucking do that. And then it got me thinking, it's like, did that happen because... I couldn't see or did that happen because I just didn't want it I don't know what it is and then I was starting to think like in my lifetime I've done things like that I've done things where it's almost people call it imposter syndrome I don't think it's I don't think it's imposter syndrome but sometimes we tend to have these fears of pressures of being great and I think some people find that easier to do than others. So if I'd, if I'd have got at least second, right? Say I had fucking won the stage, I would have been in yellow, stood up on the podium, and all of a sudden I'm this guy in yellow, leader of the Ross Tolton, the men of the fucking Ross, the race I dreamed of, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm there. And the pressure of that to be on my shoulders... Uh, I remember Anderson Silva losing. Anderson Silva was this MMA fighter, and he, and he was the probably one of the best guys ever. 
but he won the belt and he had the belt defended the belt and then when he lost it he was said it was such a relief to lose the belt he said it was just like so much pressure on him that just to get it off him felt so much better than having it on him and i think just writing that the other day made me think of all the incidents where that had actually happened in sport but also in in personal life where being overwhelmed by the magnitude of a situation or a person or someone that you can't believe that they're into you or they can't believe that they love you or you can't believe that they think so much about you because you look at them and think fuck me like they could have anybody why would they choose me <laughs> why would they choose me and I think throughout my life I've had that where it's almost like too much it's easier it's easier to to set forward to everything rather than to take it on board and realise actually you're you're better than you fucking think you are. That, that's like that's that's one thing I always admired about like all your friends have something that you want, you know, and they have something that they want. You have something that they want. And there's an exchange there, like I like the way he takes off his glove when he shakes his hand. I like the way they steer a car. I like the way they they greet everybody with a smile, not just a hello without a smile. I like the way they cook the food. I like the way they walk. I like the way they move through space and time. Every, you know, everyone's got these things where you look at and you think, fuck, I, I want to be more like that. And they, and, and they have something that they see in you that you don't really see like... I stuck a profile picture up on, on um, Instagram the other day and the amount of people, more people than ever have messaged me saying that I really like your profile picture than any other picture I've ever put up. And I don't see it. I don't, I don't see what that is. Maybe it's something that I hide behind a mask sometimes and it's there, you know, but I, I don't see it. But, um, yeah, People have things that, that you you aspire to be like, and, and and then sometimes you can't see what they see in you. I suppose it's like it's like being sick and trying to fix yourself. You got to get somebody on the outside to look at yourself. It's like it's like what Connor does. Connor is able to perform in front of twenty thousand people in his underwear. I don't know how he does that, but I want to know could be all sorts of shit going on in the background and there always is that people don't know because everybody's got the solution to the question they don't understand everyone's always going to say oh if you put more salt in your diet oh if you stood up in between rounds oh if you only kept your hands up higher but you don't know what's going on but everyone has the solution to the question that they don't understand another thing i was thinking of today was my friend roger White Roger. There was White Roger and Black Roger. Met them back in my raven days in the, in the mid 90s. And White Roger was white and Black Roger was black. <laughs> so they just fitted into the names nicely. But Roger was from Belfast, is from Belfast. But deep, deep thinking guy, well read guy, always coming up with great things. And he had this great one which is he's willing to believe everything he knows is wrong and i thought that's a good place to be that's a good that's a good place to aspire to be like and then i was out on the bike today and i just thought no that's not for me because there's certain things that i believe are true and i'm not willing to think what it was Because I just know. But I like the concept. Because it, it just makes you less 
dogmatic in your beliefs, less kind of like stuck with the I'm a Man United guy, <laughs> I'm a Mac guy, I'm a Sagres Mini kind of guy. <laughs> I'm not smart to what he's, but if you want to send me something, you can. I am running out beads though. Third set, first one just opened on me when I was just lying down, just opened. And then two days ago, the other ones snapped when I was putting them on, and these ones are, I haven't put any mantras on them, so I'm just gonna uh, double down on the mantras. So yeah, it's an interesting one today. <clears throat> um, and I would recommend that you write a book. I mean, I'm just r rabbiting or parroting on from Joe Howie, which is write the book. You don't have to publish it, but you gotta write it, handwritten, on paper, A4 thing, because you forget how you got to where you are until you start writing and like today or yesterday when I start writing about that loss for me it was just at the time it was just I like was just wearing dark glasses but now when I think back and all the times that's happened in my life whether it's sporting or whether it's personal where I've had everything just there in the palm of my fucking hand and I just set fire to it I still don't know what it is maybe it's maybe it's the pressure of carrying it or maybe it's the fact that you don't think you're good enough or a mixture of both wherever it is i'm going to think about it for the next few days and learn the lesson from it so that is it for today it's a warm one <laughs> i'm still doing my Kundalini Yoga every morning, 8 o'clock. I do, I've added in some, I didn't know it was called the World's Greatest Stretch. Um, and a few of the ones that I've learned from Kieran Davern. And they've added in the Bates Method eye exercises, which if you don't know what it is, look it up. It's just basically eye exercises to improve your eyes and yeah i'm doubling down on everything i'm training hard i'm i'm training twice a day i'm just gonna be jacked <laughs> and undeniable that's it i'm just gonna be undeniable because if you're undeniable i don't argue is there and i'm not willing to believe that everything i know is wrong and that's the other one so that's it until the next one I don't know what the next one's gonna be around but like these are just random thoughts where i'm trying to figure shit out they're not i've had a few people say to me are you okay Colin? fucking never been better i'm alive for fuck's sake relax i'm just sitting down thinking things out I'm not trying to promote a channel. I'm not trying to promote numbers. I'm not looking for likes. I'm not looking for any of that shit. But when you sit down in front of a camera and make the effort, stick on a hat and a pair of glasses and a fucking top of the set of beads and mic up and sync up and all that shit, maybe in that process, you'll figure stuff out by yourself. Or maybe not. But I like doing it. it it's a nice way to finish off an even. But it's also... Like I say, I'm not looking for views, views or likes or any of that shit. Or I'm just doing it for myself and maybe one other person. No, I'm just doing it for both of us. That's it. That's me and you. Ching, ching. Anyway, till the next one. We are all one. Harry Krishna. Mm.